1028. Now, we got the Knott's Landing lady on the line. Are you still there? I'm still here. I almost uh, forgot about you. And I did forget this morning. I turned it on. It was all over with already. Oh, no. Was it on? Yeah. It well, was pretty good. I turned on at 5 to 8, figuring I'd get the last uh, bit. And, of course, I didn't realize that it's... it's no commercial. Yeah, it's no commercial, so they show it in about 40 minutes. Right. So by 20 to 8, the uh, Knott's Landing pre-feed on the satellite is history. History. So I won't spoil it for you. Was it good? It was good. It was pretty good. It had its good points. Yeah. And he's all of a sudden the senator has got the, the uh, liver transplant with bacon and onions, and he's walking around. He's feeling great. Yeah, but he's going to get a blow to the belt. You'll see. He's going to get a what? A blow to the belt. Oh, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> so, well, I'm going to be a caller tomorrow. So. Great. Yeah, my husband and I are going to come out. Outstanding. Bring at least two, three grand. I've Hank. never been to the race. Hank so. is going to pick us some good winners. Good, good. I'm bringing my paycheck. Great. Good. Okay, listen, we'll send you over to Camilla's house next week. Right, okay. <laughs> Have a great night. You too. We'll be watching. I won't miss it this week. I don't miss it, and then we'll, we'll see you in the morning. Is our pal in it tonight? Yeah, he's in it. Thank God. Like I said, I'll be watching real close. He's in jeans, too. Like I said, <laughs> see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. By the way, because uh, I know Mr. Uh, Mr. Cont Contrived Controversy is certainly listening at this hour, because Alice has probably got the uh, veterinarian on. Uh, there was a PSA last night on the Channel 7 News about the homeless. 24% of the homeless have jobs. They're working, but they're not making enough money. Kind of like a step away from George and his wife. They're like 24% uh, are working, but don't have enough money to uh, keep, uh, afford to be able to have a place to live, like even a room. So all these people who continue coming on the air with the bums and the generalizations and all the, all the uh, homeless are in Penn Station and they're all uh, smarming all over the floor... It's a, you know, again, you can make all the excuses and you want for not contributing and not helping out, but, uh, you know, people with a brain understand the real reason. Anyway, Bob Rubin's column is incredible. I'm going to pick the appropriate time today to read it. Chains are going to kick their ass. Oh! Yeah. And, uh, meantime, let's take a call or two. We've got some on the board. We haven't even given the numbers out. It's almost like yesterday. We did have a hostile caller in Plantation. And, of course, since we do like that contract, we are your talk number two talk station because we've already got a talk. Oh, look at that. The market's down almost 14 points. We already have the talk leader in town. The thing that I found really amusing is before they cranked up their 25-watt uh, light bulb, and before they even changed the format, they were running promos. Hi, this is Norm Kent. Join me on your talk leader. What does that mean? Another one of these ridiculous cliches. And, by the way, Norm, i got to say this. I'm coming down 7th Avenue. I get off the Golden Glades. I'm coming down this morning. I punched them up for a couple of minutes. Who's he talking about? Me. That's the one thing. They ought to call the format the station that talks about Neil Rogers all day. And, uh, and I'm thinking, gee, I better slow down because I'm losing the signal. And just as he got to the part where he was making this big challenge and da ba 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 I couldn't hear it anymore. So whatever you said, leave it on my answering machine, okay? And the check is in the mail. Anyway, 1031 at WIOD, we lost our contrived uh, hostile caller there on Plantation. Please call back because we want you to vent your spleen for the whole world to hear it. I'm a bad guy, I'm nasty, I'm rotten, I'm a son of a bitch, etc. and so on, okay? I mean, I admit it. And so is Bob Rubin and Ed Pope and everybody else who says or writes something that you don't like that you can't cope with because naturally, college football is what life is all about. See, my point really has nothing to do with college football. It just has to do with, the, with, with behavior and antics and this whole community. And uh, there are a lot of people who don't want to understand that. Because like the people that call sports talk, most of them are professional jock sniffers anyway. So no matter what they say, it isn't going to really be relevant because uh, they can't see the DeForest for the trees. And by the way, speaking of DeForest, no, seriously, he, uh, we talked in the hall this morning. He loved the show yesterday. He thought it was hysterical. Now, see, at least we got one guy in the sports department that's got a good sense of humor who can see the forest for the trees. Isn't that where that, that's where they came from, up with that thing, isn't it? You can't see the forest for the trees? Come on, Jeff, what's up? Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Neil, how are you? Okay, so far. Hey, how about some hurricanes, huh? Canes are gonna kick their ass. Oh! Hey, they've been in the top three the past five years. Yeah, that's what counts, pal. It, it, <laughs> that's all that counts. We're number one, man. Hey, We're man. number one. Yeah. Who do you think is the best team in the country? You know something? I don't know and I don't care. College football is for prepubescent minds, okay? It's a fun and games. Colorado needs five down to beat a team. Who cares? Georgia Tech. Who cares? Georgia go Tech. away. Go away. Go sniff some jock straps, will you, pal? You bug me. I, I'm not going to do that on sports talk. That's for the jock sniffers on sports talk. This is for adults or people pretending to be adults. 
like Hank. Hank's great. He had such a good show last night, but it was really ticking me off because it was taking up all the time that I wanted to hear. I don't want to hear what Norman Brayman's got to say. I mean, he's got Buddy Ryan and the Eagles, and he's going to tell us about brutality on the field. Norman, your credibility on that topic is uh, minimal at best, okay? Mobile. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Good morning. How are you? Great. Happy New Year, sir. And the same to you. I was up at uh, the new Siam Song last week. Saw Boone and In Lake Duke Worth, right? In Lake Worth. Boy, yep. it was great. He was doing it up there. Excellent. What you need to do is get up there and get him a new picture so he can take down that picture of you and uh, Mr. Montavani from Lakeland that he's got hanging in the uh, front entranceway there. He's got the bird brain on the wall up there? Yes, sir. Man. Your smiling face sitting right next to him there. Fat face, too, probably. Those old fat pictures when I was like a cow. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. Um... One other thing, I had a radio accident last night. I listened to uh, Mr. Kane for a few minutes yesterday afternoon, and when, yes. I, left the, when I left the office late, um, it was still on the station, and I turned on the truck, and who was on the radio talking to, whoever it was that was on it, uh, I guess about 7.30 or so, but your old pal Gilbert. All right. Oh, man. What More radio, power to uh, him. Great. What a radio slut he is, huh? Thank God. Boy, <laughs> Gilbert, I'm telling you, they're on 24 hours a day. They're the talk leader. Just have a great time, Gilbert, with our blessing. Please this. We're going to send Michael Corleone over there to kiss his ring. <laughs> have a great day, sir. Thanks. You too, Neil. 1035 at WYOD. We have a couple lines open now, both in Broward, amazingly enough. We Listen, we're out of business in Broward now, so we give the number very sheepishly, 524 Nine four six three five two four. The veterinarian is in, and we'll be right back. Okay, it's uh, ten thirty nine. I got to pick a horse that called her. Phil will become apoplectic, and we want to have him in a good mood for when we come out tomorrow. So he'll give us a winner. First race, there is a horse that just jumps off the page at you. You just cannot refuse, Mister Partridge with Bobby Lester. These are four year old maidens. Wow, maiden claiming ten thousand. So these are the cream of the crap crop. Mr. Partridge with Bobby Lester. And you know what they say, there's no bester than Bobby Lester. So uh, that's our pick. Mr. Partridge in the first, you got it, Phil. It's in your hands. Whip him and uh, bring him home. Is that a pig report on two? Hello. Hello. Long gone. Mobile from Green Acres. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I just want to express that I think you're bad for uh, South Florida sports. <laughs> and uh, I think you bring division between the players and... Uh, <laughs> And the fans, uh, you never talk about anything positive about Sammy Smith. He went over 850 yards this year. Right. The he way sucks, you talk sir. about the he hurricanes, yep. we've got great teams. We're, we're winning this year. Yep. And, and, you're a, and you're a negative, negative, negative. Thank you. You're much welcome. Okay. The have, horror of radio. Okay. Have a nice new year. Negative, negative. And turn it up real quick so I can hear your voice, sir. Come on. You can do it. Okay. You can let it go now. 10.40, 20 till 11 at WIOD. Mr. Negative, it's only Neil. It's that bad Neil. He's the one that's saying all of these things, not Bob Rubin and not uh, all these other people, Eddie Pope. I mean, if even the Pope says it, you got a little credibility uh, to that, right? That's what Michael Corleone would have said. There's an open line in Dade and one in, uh, no, there's not. And one in Palm Beach, 655, Mr. Negative, 655, shoot the messenger. We're upset. Hey, I call him as I see him, and I'm not going to be a shill for anybody, okay? I love the Dolphins. And by the way, all you great Dolphin fans, you got till 4 o'clock this afternoon to go out there and make that game a sellout and get it on Channel 10 so a lot of you can sit on your fat ass Saturday afternoon and watch it for free. You got till 4 o'clock. They ex gave you a one-day extension. And let's see if you do like they did in Philadelphia where they got the one-day extension and they sold it out like the tickets were uh, like hotcakes. Did you see the things on the news last night? They showed the... I swear I saw Fat Rich waddling around there at one gate. I'm serious. There were like three, four people at the uh, ticket gate in the middle of the day. It was like around... The, the thing was taken at noon or one o'clock. There was nobody there. They're selling like uh, cold cakes. Like matzo balls in Saudi Arabia. Like halava in the Bronx. Oral Springs. Yeah, Neil, I'm uh, just calling up. Uh, after all this uproar about the Hurricanes, I can't believe that they don't think hockey would go over big down here. Canes are going to kick their ass. Oh! Yeah. All they care about is whether you win. I think, you know, rather than put on all this padding, we should maybe get a sport where they can... Well, you know something, maybe it's, just, use big sticks. maybe it's just as well that we aren't going to get a hockey team as much as I'd like to have it for selfish reasons, because I love hockey. Because, although I'll say this, the game we had, the exhibition game with the Kings and the Rangers... The people who were there, the overwhelming majority of them were, you know, people who understood the game, probably most of us from up north. 
Uh, they, you know, there were no fights in that game, obviously, because it was an exhibition game. Nobody was going to inflict injury in an exhibition game, and everybody loved it. We had a great time. So what I was going to start to say may be wrong, but you've got to understand, college football has this Yahoo appeal anyway. You know what I'm saying? There's a certain, at least in the South, there's a Yahoo redneck mentality and approach to college football and to football in general. Football has more of a Yahoo appeal than, say, baseball or hockey or basketball, any of those sports. Well, I mean, last night, I mean, I could just picture Jay Leno saying, geez, I went to a, you know, a hockey game and a hurricane football game broke out in the stands yeah. or something. Yeah, well, we didn't get the hockey team, but we I got know, the I players. I was disappointed about that. And, you know, I mean, then you got to think, now we're going to get a baseball team during the hot summer when no one's here. If they can't sell out a playoff game for the Dolphins who make the playoffs. What a comment that is. You notice how all of these great jock sniffers out there, they don't want to talk about that. All they want to talk about is I'm a negative guy and I'm a bad divisive force and I saw things that they didn't see, and the people on CBS are a bunch of well, slime balls, and Bob Rubin is a douchebag, and Eddie Pope should uh, the eat the halava in hell and all that kind of stuff, yeah. because, uh, you know, we're spoiling their parade. They don't give a damn how it happened, what happened, we won, we're great, and all of this other crap, and the rest of the world is laughing at us, you know. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I listened to uh, Jim Mandage last night, and as a matter of fact, I got through, and I said, well, I wasn't sure the Hurricanes were uh, playing with good sportsmanship, and he basically said, what sportsmanship got to do with winning? Yeah, but he listen, let me tell you, I listened to that whole show, and he was toying with the audience. Because when he came on, I'm telling you, at 7.05, in that next five minutes, he said what was really on his mind. And then he went back to uh, pacifying the uh, jock-sniffing uh, sports talk audience. Right. When he says that there's no room in the NFL for jerks, and that all of that, it wasn't the officials, and it wasn't the media, it was, it was uh, all a bunch of crap, I think that uh, says it very well. I couldn't have said it better or more succinctly myself. Okay, the other point... And I, I also to... spoke to Mr. Indy the forest with the trees in the hallway and i got news for you what you're hearing on the air isn't necessarily exactly what all of our mavens think okay okay i don't know too many people with an iq of over three who are defending the barbaric grotesque behavior that went on in the name of a football game and people having a good time the other day and even the players are saying things for example darren handy senior center says i feel bad for the coach because he's going to take the heat but we were just playing football he says it might be embarrassing to the university and the coaches but it's not to the players. We enjoy it. It's like a show. Right. The other thing, um, I was picking on my wife at work yesterday, and I turned on Steve Kane, and not only is he picking on the the uh, homeless, now he says some of them are bringing down more money a week than he is panhandling. Yeah. So we shouldn't feel bad because right. they're probably making more money than we are. Well, listen, uh, maybe we can give them all a few baseball cards and make them rich. Yeah, you know? I was going to say, I hope you're going to order it. It's your baseball so. card station, ladies and gentlemen. From 6 to 10 and 2 to 6, we got baseball card mania. Well, I punch I up Norm this morning. The first thing he's talking about is baseball cards and the, how, the, how ridiculous the prices are. You know, I've got to be honest with you. Baseball cards are, you know, for about 30 seconds a year, I think, pretty interesting topic. Well, I don't know. I have some from when I was a kid, which was probably about 20. There you go. Well, listen, get and, on the horn. Know, maybe with I should listen because, you know, I was a big Boston Bruins fan. I have just about all the teams from when I was a kid. But um, I heard Steve Kane say that, yeah, whatever it is, FTL or W Death, whatever it is. They're going to have a little uh, card set printed up of all the disc jockeys. Yeah, isn't that great? And then I they thought, can then they I can send buy one then they can send them over to us, and when we do our remotes, we can give them out so people will have them. Right, because they'll definitely be you know a couple years from now, probably three years, they'll be at least worth ten or twenty cents a piece. Yeah, I want to get that Rick Siderman card. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. Ten forty-five at WIOD, where the natives are restless. Right, chains are going to take their ass. Oh, Fuck. yeah. Okay, 1047 at WYOD. There's one open line in Broward, by the way. I realize we're up against the gun. 524-9463. A giant... Oh, we got a mobile on the star line. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of these people that pretend to be an adult once in a while. Okay. Uh, are you Are you a jock sniffer, sir? Uh, not particularly. The odor is offensive. Well... I, I enjoy sports. I guess it depends know. on who is wearing it. Yes? Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy sports, but... You know, <laughs> there's, it's, with the hurricane deal, it's the same thing like when you get an NFL back who's got a reputation for fumbling everybody smacks at the ball and it just snowballs into a bigger thing the hurricanes are not the cleanest team in college football well there is an understatement for the uh, centuries but again yes i think some of the again. officials are hair triggered yeah because they know or hair brain stuff. But, well that that too yeah but it, it well let's let's for the sake of argument say that half of the uh, 15 yard of those uh, grotesque penalties were 
uh, overreaction by those nasty SEC officials who love the Gators and who hate us like... So that leaves four personal fouls. When the last time you saw four personal fouls in one game against one you're, team? You're, you're, you're absolutely right. Okay. That See, that's something these no people aren't thinking there. about. Even giving the greatest uh, amount of uh, latitude and ripping the, uh, the men in the stripes, uh, it's ridiculous. You know? I, I was watching the news the other day, and one of those rocket scientists who played for the Hurricanes came out with the statement, well, that's the way we are, and we're not going yeah, to and change. The, and the, the thing that went on at the end of the game, when they all broke out into dance, it was the most embarrassing scene I have ever seen. And if that's what this community is proud of, and that, that's what, and that had nothing to do with the game. I mean, that was after it was over. If that's what you people want to see, then good luck to you. That's all I can say. But then again, it comes back to what you said. So what's college football anyhow? Bunch of crap. Exactly. It's the minor leagues for the NFL. Right. Well, why don't we call it, why don't we pay them to call it what it is and let everybody go out and rip their heads off? Right? Sir? His mobile phone just died. Sorry, it wasn't me, sir. It's that cheap cellular phone. Get with it. We have one open line in Broward. 524 WIOD. 524, we're dying over here, and one on the star line for our Bell South Mobility Jock Sniffers at Star IOD. It's 1049. We'll be right back. 1053 at WIOD. We have an open line in Dade, 751. And the Broward lines, we're all finished in Broward. They got their own uh, talk leader up there. They're all open, but if there's anybody left, they're all open. 524. 9463524WID. We can handle it. We're big uh, we're big guys. The Giants fan. Me, Neil. Yes, sir. I'm back. I haven't spoken to you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Now the Giants are going to do it, babe. All the way to the Super Bowl. Good luck to you. You'll need it. Well, at least you saw out and they're like the Dolphins. Hey, listen. Are you, what are you arguing with me about? <laughs> I know. I know. Do I know it? Yeah, you know it. How come you guys don't play in the city, though? How come you play in Jersey? I kick us out of Yankee Stadium. Is it better because they had 2,300 murders in New York last year? Yeah, Do you realize what the population of the city is going to be if they continue escalating at the present rate? By the year 2000, there'll be like 40 people left. Oh, then I could go back then. Howard Stern will have an 80 share, but it'll only represent six people. Ooh. Unbelievable. Yeah, then we can all move up there and have a good time. That's it. That's it. Well, okay. now, let, let me ask you, is Sims coming back? Sims, maybe for the championship game against the Eagles. But may, against the Eagles, <laughs> huh? Maybe. Definitely. Well, I hope the Eagles go easy on them, you know, because they're one of the cleanest teams in the league. That's what Norman Brayman told us. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, good luck, sir. Okay, bye. You'll need it. Let's get those tickets bought up, okay, so we don't have giant fans like that calling and rubbing it in, rubbing your nose in it. And we can't, we, you know, the one thing we don't, I have no idea how many tickets remain. They just uh, won't tell us. What is the deal with that? Remember that time you called up and they said they got real hostile? And they said, we wouldn't even tell Rick Weaver how many tickets are left. They're very mysterious about that over at JRS. So there is Boku tickets left, and you got till 4 o'clock this afternoon to get your lazy ass over to Joe Robbie Stadium and buy them and uh, put a, silence some of these uh, cryptic critics from out of town. And Clint Eastwood as the beaver. That's your ring you got there, beaver. Uh, I don't see any carrots, beaver. Why do you, idiot? It's 14 carat gold. What's that? There, Beaver. Beaver's got a gold ring, Judy. Uh, Doesn't look like real gold to me. Uh, hey, Judy, bite me. I'm not allowed to bite stuff. I go to an orthodontist. Uh, all right then, Judy. Bite this. You really showed her, Beaver. Yeah, you really showed her. 1106. A good old W.I.O.D. Why don't we just play all this stuff the rest of the day, huh? We do have a full board of calls there. Oh, boy. Aren't you excited? But uh, we should play all the ACN stuff. It's kind of a bonus for our sane people out there in the audience, the ones who don't call. West Palm Beach. Uh, yeah, Neil. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, sir. Top of the uh, thing to you. Uh, I'd just like to say, you know, I'm a, I'm a real big Hurricanes fan. And I got pennants sitting around all over my house. You have what? I'm a big Hurricanes fan, and I've got pennants sitting up on my wall, you know, shirts, national champions. You're things. doing pennants? Pennants, yeah. You know, you know, banners. I know, I know. How, and, about, how about football cards? And, uh, oh, no, none of that, none of that. No hurricane cards, at least. And, Damn. uh, but I'd just like to say, you know, based on yesterday's performance, and probably throughout the last three or four years with Johnson and, uh, Erickson as coach, I think Miami has done more to disgrace their university and the city of Miami than Florida could ever have done a disgrace their university and city by being put on probation twice. Oh! 
And uh, that's just the point I'd like to make. make. I'm, you know, I'm a big fan, but I, you know, I just don't understand why. Well, don't let all these other people browbeat you. Don't feel embarrassed to speak the truth and speak your mind because these other folks are, first of all, a bunch of phonies. And most of them uh, five years ago didn't know the Hurricane football team from their ass. And uh, they're just a bunch of front-running slobs, and they just uh, want to cover it up and bask in it. That's okay. And they see, they see what they want to see. Well, you know, you know, that's exactly right because I, I can remember back to uh, when we had Howard Schnellenberg and we won the championship in 83. We'd be probably one of the greatest teams ever assembled in college football in that Nebraska team, you know, Rozier, Irving Fry, yep. all those players. And we that, did was it with, a, that was a brutal, death-defying game. You know, and we did, we did it with pride, dignity, and we did it without the antics that we have today. And, you know, I would much rather be remembered for teams like that than a team that we have now where we can't, you know, we go out, we beat an inferior team, and we have to use the tactics that we do when we probably, in 83, went out you know, and beat the best team ever, doing it, you know, fair play, you know, with, with intelligence, with good coach. Well, you know, Erickson had that press conference yesterday, and I'll quote directly. It says, Erickson, who said he was embarrassed by his players' actions, didn't think any of it was funny. He said it did get out of hand, okay? That's from the horse's butt. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, little, you know, he doesn't mention anything about his 15-yard penalty or anything. Right. Like yeah, he, like, kind of set the tone for it with a big, stupid mouth. You know, and, and I don't. I really don't think that, you know, the change is going to start with the president of the university. I think that it's going to, you know, if the alumni, the high-paying alumni that decide what goes on at that university like this type of, you know, play, these type of antics, and it's going to go on for a long time regardless of what the president... Hey, it's big bucks. Yeah, regardless. Big bucks, that's all it's all about. You know, and uh, I'd just like to make, make one more point. I'd like to say, you know, all these people that aren't supporting the Dolphins, buying tickets, you know, calling up, criticizing them. You know, I just like to say when we get all the way to the Super Bowl this year and next year, you know, you guys can just stay home and don't, you know, don't say that the Dolphins are your team. Exactly. Well, I'm going to buy a club box seats for next year for the whole season so that I can, you know, enjoy the game and sit in air-conditioned comfort, have a little sandwich, not, not sit next to the school teacher. <laughs> have a great day. You too, Neil. By the way, it finally dawned on me. Remember yesterday I was trying to think of that cheer that they do at games, which is like, okay, at high school games, and they also do it at football games, but... It, in this town, you'll even hear people doing it at the Dolphin game. And it is so sophomoric and juvenile. Here we go, Tigers. Here we go. And they're kind of, That is so... I'm telling you, folks, if any of you do it at the Dolphin game on Saturday, we're going to have you immediately taken care of by Don Vito, Fat Rich. I'm telling you, it is just unacceptable. That's, that's like for kindergarten games, okay? Here we go, Tigers. Here we go. Here we go. And it's like that, that uh, thing that the guy was talking about yesterday with those bands that play the same... Bop, 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 bop. You know the one I'm talking about? Oh, I mean, okay. But see, that point is, that's college football. It's it's like a juvenile level. It's fun. It's uh, child's play. That's what it's supposed to be. And the people in this town don't understand it. This is supposed to be a major metropolitan community, okay? And the jackass that called earlier that said that I was divisive and I criticized Sammy Smith. You see, I'm a big Cub fan, too. But there are guys on a team who suck. And that doesn't mean that I'm a lesser of a fan because, in fact, that gives me a right to criticize if I'm a devoted fan. We go up to Chicago. I don't even live there. We go to the games. We pay for the tickets. Uh, we pay for the hot dogs. We have a good time, all right? So to be overly critical is the other point, okay? That's obnoxious. But, you know, call it like it is. Be honest. I mean, am I going to sit here and tell you that uh, Steve Wilson is a great pitcher? No. Or that Jerome Walton is a great center fielder? No. I'm going to call him as I see him. That doesn't make me less of a fan or divisive. Sammy Smith, in my opinion, stinks. And he runs up all his yards against horsemen or teams. That's my opinion. I, ho I hope Saturday gains 200 yards because I'm a fan. I want us to win. But to try to compare that with being honest about the hooligan tactics that went on in the uh, Cotton Bowl on Tuesday, it's garbage. It's just another attempt to cover it up and sniff that junk. That's all you want to do because it makes you feel better supposed to be a major market where you support your professional team college teams are for the basically for the alumni and the student body don't you people understand that i don't get it in new york do they talk hey columbia man columbia kicked ass this week of course not the alumni and the student body at these schools talk about it like mandage with his stinking michigan wolverines and with my, me with my stinking spartans that's what it's all about and the idea that all of a sudden, if we live in Miami, hey, we have to be big Hurricane football fans, I don't understand that. I've never understood that. I just don't get it. Because that's college stuff for college people and alumni. The professional stuff is what 
major league communities get into and support in Detroit. Do they talk about the... I don't even know if the University of Detroit's got a football team. I don't know. Or Wayne State's got a football team. Are they busy talking about that? Of course not. They're talking about the Lions and the Tigers and the Red Wings and the Pistons, whatever else they got. That And, of course, the people who went to Michigan, the alumni, which is enormous numbers, or to Michigan State, they're the ones that get on the I-94 up there and jam up the highway and go nuts and go and go crazy. So that there's 78,000 people in East Lansing every home game or 100,000 in Ann Arbor every day because that's uh, what it's all about for the student body and the alumni. And I'm going to tell you, if the uh, university had to depend on the student body to support the sporting events that go on here, including baseball and basketball where they can't draw flies, they'd have to fold up the whole program. That's the sad part of it. And I realize the university isn't as big as some of the ones I'm talking about, but let's face it, how many alumni are there in South Florida? Got to be enormous, many, many thousands, aren't there? Got to be lots. I know there's a lot of Florida people and FSU people. Got to be a lot of alumni and their families and friends and the student body and their families. Got to make up a lot of people. What the hell am I talking about? It's 11.14. We'll be right back. Hey, it's uh, 11.18 at WIOD. That's a classic. That's outstanding. Mobile. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I just, my cousin, I think that I, I've never really heard discussed on your show or anybody else's show when you talk about non-support for the Dolphins. Um, I had season tickets for 10 years for the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. And two things occurred. One didn't affect me, but it affected a lot of people. When Joe Robbie Stadium opened up. They screwed a lot of people. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people. The other point is I, I hear people say about how great Joe Robbie Stadium is. Well, I don't know what perspective they have, but my seats in the Orange Bowl were in the front row. And I have, I Sir, have the similar... Orange Bowl was a hemorrhoid-inducing dump. Absolutely, no doubt about it. But from the prospect of being able to view the action and being a part of the action for the fan, it rated number one. The but, Orange Bowl? Yes, because the oh, field you gotta was be right kidding. there. The, the field, field was right there? If you're sitting uh, in, in the upper part of the Orange Bowl, I wasn't going to say upper deck, but the, in the uh, nosebleed seats, you're about four miles away. No, well, that's true. But, I mean, you know, there's no stadium in the upper reaches that you're going to see everything. I don't think there's a bad seat in the stadium in Joe Robbie Stadium. It's a state-of-the-art. It's a beautiful place. I mean, I can under when you're talking about getting screwed with the tickets, a lot of people have that problem. I'm not going to argue because it's a fact. But to try to knock the stadium, I just don't buy that. To me, it is a fabulous stadium. And the only thing that makes for the plastic atmosphere are the people who are in it. That's the problem. Well, part of the problem is, you know, my seats in Joe Robbie were front row again. To see the action on the field, I need a binoculars. I mean, who wants to be 40 yards back from the field sitting in the front row? That's well, the all, I can, all I can tell you is that when we're not in the seats, which I have great seats on the 50-yard line, which is a lot further if you're front row and we're on the 50-yard line, I'm a lot further back than you are. Right. I have no problem seeing anything. If we go up in the skybox, which is that much further up and away, I don't have any problem seeing any action. Huh. And there are a lot of people who do take binoculars, so what's the big deal? How about like if you're in Municipal Stadium in Cleveland and you're up in the bleachers four miles from the field watching a crappy team? I mean, you know, you can make all the excuses in the world. We've got a kick-ass team. For, you know, nobody dreamed this team would ever make the playoffs, much less go 12-4. and four. Let's not make excuses now, okay? Let's revel in it and support them and enjoy it. I still love the team. I have nothing against it. Yeah, okay. All right. Go out and buy some tickets. 21 after 11. Well, he's already got his. Uh, Star IOD on Bell South Mobility. Let's go to Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil? Yeah. Yeah, um, my comments on the uh, hurricane issue. You know, the, the whole situation, if uh, you look at it, it's uh, based on the coach not taking control of the club. Amen. Like I he said last has, night, the piece they used out of my show on Channel 7 last night, I said Dennis Erickson has to take responsibility, and if he couldn't control the actions of the players and yank him out of the game if they were doing crap, that, that he still has to take responsibility. That's his fault. He's a wimp. If he's if he's going to let it go on and then go go out and say he was embarrassed by it, didn't think it was funny, and it got out of hand and all this other, where is he to do something about it? I mean, I mean, Christ, if you look at it real good, I mean, second second quarter, I me being the coach, I'd have yanked all those guys off. Yeah. Off, off, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it for all these people who are saying, well, we played great, which they did, by the way, uh, and won 46 to three without 200 yards and penalties, they could have won 76 to three. And they wouldn't have left a bad taste in everybody's mouth and given a bad mark to the mark to the school and his town. And also, a lot of those people voting in the poll, uh, you know, probably they wouldn't ever wound up higher than number three, but certainly probably gotten a few more votes because of the fact that uh, people wouldn't have been so turned off by it. But we will say to the Texas people, stop crying. Next year, 
You're going to have both of these hurricanes playing dirty for you, too. Okay. <laughs> Take care. See ya. <laughs> Well, you know, I have no sympathy for Texas and that whole program. Texas, Oklahoma, that whole Yahoo uh, country over there, their their programs are notorious and they stink like hell anyway. So I'm certainly not sticking up for them. It's just that uh, these guys, based on uh, the hysteria that everybody in this town gets involved in it, and I still, if you can explain that to me, I'd love to hear about it. I, I just don't understand it. I do not understand how college uh, football, I was going to say sports, but it's only the football team, creates such a furor in a town that's got a professional football team, that has a professional basketball team, that is on the verge of getting a baseball team, that was an inch away from getting a hockey team, or several inches away, I don't, I don't get it. If we're not hurricane football fans and we're bad people and we're uh, assholes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I don't understand that. I didn't go to school there. Uh, in fact, I didn't go to school much at Michigan State either. I had a good time there for five semesters, but uh, at least that's where I was uh, allegedly enrolled anyway. And that's uh, my team, okay? I do remember having done Hurricane Baseball for all those years. When Michigan State played us in uh, baseball, I certainly wanted the Hurricanes to win because I'm a Hurricane Baseball fan. In addition to which, when I was at Michigan State, I never went to a baseball game. I went to all the uh, hockey games, all the uh, basketball games in the old Jenison Fieldhouse. Certainly went to every uh, home football game and some on the road. We went to South Bend, an experience I would never want to go through again. But uh, that was in college. That was rah-rah, here we go, Spartans, here we go. Here we go. You know, that old, that's it's a child play. It's caca, okay? It's fun. I'll grow it already. Grow up. Grow up. And let me say it again. I want to direct the parallel between the attitude of Dan Marino and most of the Dolphins toward Tim McHire, who has a big mouth. Great player. He puts his money where his mouth is. He does a great job on the field. But let's not, you know, they're, they're not happy about him shooting off a big mouth before the playoff game. And they made that very clear. And as Jim Mandich said, there's no room in the NFL for jerks. 24 after 11 at WIOD and we'll return. Things are gonna kick their ass. Oh! 11.27 at WIOD or, and speaking of Canes, we got Hurricane Basketball tonight, huh? Don't hear anybody talking about that. UM and St. Joseph, 7 o'clock, after which the Hank Goldberg Show with special guest Steve Alamo. And every day I have to shry some. Miami. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'd like to say my point of view on the Canes. Okay, go right ahead, sir. This is America after all. All right, I You're think... You're entitled four or five seconds. You're going to cut me off? No. All right. Not I think yet. that you're very hypocritical. Okay. And no, well, I thought you were going to talk about the Canes. Now you're talking about me. Oh, In other words, no. you want to shoot the messenger on, again because you don't like what no, I'm saying. No, no, no. On the Canes subject. Okay. Simply because you talk about hockey, which is probably the most violent sport can I, can I let you in on a little secret? Mm -hmm. I like hockey. Not In fact, I'm nauseated by the people who go to hockey games to see fights and blood, just like the people who go to see to auto racing and want to see a crash and see people get killed. That's not why I love hockey. I love the sport. Okay. That's one thing. I mean, speaking for myself, I will admit to you beyond a shadow of a doubt, there are a lot of people who go to hockey games because they want to see violence. No I, would, I would probably But if violence. you understand hockey, you would understand that... First of all, the fights in hockey, nobody's really getting hurt most of the time because they got 85 pounds of uh, equipment and clothing on, and they're just uh, tearing each other. They're holding on to each other and doing little waltz. Okay? Yeah, but they also have sticks yeah. that and they beat on. Exactly. Other. And uh, when I see, in fact, Eddie Shack used to play for my Toronto Maple Leafs, was one of the filthiest players who ever played, and was uh, wicked with a stick. And I was embarrassed by it, okay, because uh, people get maimed and blinded and uh, severely injured by spearing and high sticking, and there's okay. no place for it. You're right. Um, second of all, as far as the referees concerned, oh, the SEC. Boy. Listen, I'm yeah. not going to, you know, <laughs> say that they're bad because they're SEC. <laughs> Let's all cry. They, listen, we was they robbed. Could, we only listen, won by I'm 43 not cry. points. Why don't you listen to what I have okay, to say? Okay, I'm listening, but I'm crying along with you. I want to cry. Okay, go ahead and cry. All right, the referees could have taken control of that game from square one by ejecting is, one or two people. Yeah, that's my opinion. Okay, 200 yards and penalties. If there was something that bad. They should have ejected somebody early. That sends a message. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a point. That's a valid point. And they didn't do it for whatever reason. And from square one... Or maybe when they had the altercation at the beginning of the uh, first series for the Hurricanes on the sideline, they should have told Erickson when he opened up his big mouth, uh, the next uh, altercation we have, we're going to kick some people out. And not even tell them. They should just do it. Yeah. Okay? And the players, they want to play. That'll stop a lot of that. Yeah. Second of all, as far as a black mark on Miami is and, uh, you know, I don't know where that comes from, but 
I, you know, I hear you, know you, where I hear you well, get wait a minute, radio wait, wait a minute. and call this town a cesspool. It is. And I've got to listen is. to it. What, you've got to listen to it? Wait a no, minute. No, no, we, no. Okay. Wait right. a minute. We just I learned something. I want to listen to it. You want right. to listen to it. Why do you want to listen to it? You I obviously think I'm a hypocrite and a douchebag and you don't like what I say. No. I'm being honest. I love, listen. You are the Miami Hurricanes of talk radio. Yeah, right. That's I mean, my opinion. Well, your That's why I like listening to you. Let me say this to you, okay? Okay. I wish this town was everything or most everything that it could be. See, I've lived here for for almost 16 long years, okay? I love the weather, I love the beaches, the sand, the palm trees, the racetracks. I love a lot of things here. But this town is a Bush League town, <coughs> town that's run by a bunch of douchebag politicians and blue-haired senior citizens who want everything for themselves. I mean, do I have to... You know it's true. Oh, no, I'm not arguing you with you You think this there. town has fulfilled its potential or even scratched the surface? No. And I go on vacation, I go out to Vegas, where the weather much of the year is marginal at best, and it's packed, and everybody's having a great time, and they're raking in the dough, and it's, it's like a different world. We could have all of that here, and we don't, because it's just a... It's like a festering racial sewer here we got the blacks and the cubans and the anglos and the jews and the gentiles and this and that's all that ever goes on here it's it's pathetic it's sad you're right I now i can sit here and be a shill and say hey we're the greatest and this is the best town in the world and new york sucks and chicago stinks and and uh, i won't shill for anybody okay i mean when they start paying me a million or two a year then i'll shill because everybody's got their price but until that day starts which it isn't going to happen i'm going to say what's on my mind okay and that's why you listen to the show and you know it you're right. Absolutely. Okay. Have a nice life. You too. Happy New Year. Bye. Boy, like I said yesterday, we're starting the New Year with an awful lot of uh, energy here, aren't we? A little bit too much. I don't want to be worn out by vacation time again. See, that's the rough thing about vacations. I want more vacation time, not just for me, but for everybody. You go on vacation, you get your batteries charged, recharged, right, Sarah? Sally? What is her name, anyway? And you come back and you're full of piss and vinegar. Or part of that. And you're ready to rock and roll. But then as the uh, weeks and the months drag on, I mean, for me to think that it's like six more months before I go on vacation again, and to think that Marvin the Raw Man is out there uh, playing Mr. Bon Vivant somewhere, uh, that's outrageous. Here's a man who should have uh, been stuck in the desert, in the Negev, with a map toward the Mediterranean Sea. But that's okay. Hey, listen, what does he want? He's making all this money, he gets all his vacation time, gets three weeks a year. What the hell does he want? I want five, but I'll settle for four. How's that? Months. Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Neil. Don't you agree, sir? More vacation time for everybody? Absolutely. Starting okay. with me and then with you. Okay. I'll I, stand uh, on mine. You know, you uh, you were talking about Vegas, and that's what I'd called, but I wanted to talk about briefly about the Canes. So, well, I watched the game, too, and I'm a real Canes fan. Good. I winced every time, you know, they were shaking their booty. I mean, once or twice was fine. Yeah. At the end of the game, that, that display, I mean, after you pummel somebody 46-3 to 3 and you've beaten them physically, emotionally, mentally, every possible way, and then to go out there and do that jive-ass crap, it's the whole... Bush. Oh, man, it's, it's embarrassing. Bush League. And not only that... Um, I, I had read somewhere in the paper where there were a number of the ex-hurricanes that were on the sideline, and they said that that may have instigated that they had said, do whatever it takes to win, and there was, I don't know if even, you heard Even old Jimmy Johnson was there with his uh, phony wig on the sideline. <laughs> no, I, the, the wind was the only thing that could withstand that. Yeah. I, I had heard uh, you, uh, right before the Christmas break, there uh, talking about being in Vegas. Did I hear that you'd stayed at the Excalibur? No, I went in there, though. I, um, I make the rounds. I, yeah. was, I was in the Mirage. I thought the Excalibur was fantastic. We stayed there. Did you like it? Oh, it was unbelievable. Well, yeah. We were out what in, uh, Southern California for a weekend, and it was during the weekend of October when the fight was uh, in Vegas. The, right, uh, right. The 32nd Wonder. Mm -hmm. And uh, we couldn't get in. We were, you know, and it was so smoggy out in California, we decided, let's go to Vegas. We couldn't right. get a room. We drove there anyway, crossed the desert, which is a trip, and got, ended up getting a room, a beautiful room at the Excalibur for like 50 bucks a night. Right. And the, of all the casinos, we want, we were there all the whole weekend. Uh, that was the, the Hoppinus Casino. I mean, it really was a, a lot of action going yeah, on. Yeah, and it's a beautiful place. You know, before I went, I was asking people, because I had not been in the Mirage or the Excalibur since they're both new. Yeah. 
and people were saying, well, the Mirage is great, the Excalibur is uh, garbage, it's like Disney World. I don't know what these people were talking about. I mean, if you look at the outside with the castles and all that stuff, uh, yeah, well, right, it's so like it's, Disney World. But inside, it is one of, you're right, the most beautiful, one of the most happening casinos. They, you go up the escalators on its uh, second level. That second third level, level where you look down at the casino and right. then you go downstairs. I heard you talking about the little medieval village. Right, and the restaurants, they got Italian restaurant and German and the buffet, and uh, it, it's, it's great. I don't know what the hell anybody would want. We, when we went to, uh, for example, went to, walked over to Caesars, and I mean, the entrance to Caesars and the Mirage, you could drop dead from it. It's gorgeous. Yeah, but right. When, well, when the Mirage, the, the casino, outside of the Mirage is uh, amazing. That that volcano and all that. Yeah. But the the Caesars Casino was dead. I mean, it's so spread out. I kind of like the the fact that the at the because I like to play blackjack, and it was all kind of centrally located. It was all kind of action going on. The only thing at the Excalibur it is so big that the sports book is where I came in. The entrance I came it's off in. to the right there. With the flags. You're right. And from the valley parking. And they come in, and I had to get at my bearings in the beginning because I really was afraid I was going to get lost and then go outside and have to walk all the way around the building, which would take half an hour. Seriously, it, it's so enormous. And so I kept using the sports book as kind of like a uh, <laughs> post, uh, you know, to find my way. Yeah, well, I was there a lot anyway. I happened to be there over a Sunday, and uh, it's, uh, it was a lot of fun. Now I see why... Uh, Hank uh, keeps those phone numbers handy. You bet. But I uh, just wanted to touch base with you on that. I tried to call you during the holidays and talk about that when you were, were talking about Vegas. and uh, You just happened to give me a perfect segue while I was on hold there. Well, you're a gentleman with great taste. Have okay. a good evening. Bye. Bye-bye. 1137 at WIOD. We have an open line in Dade County. It said, was that Randy Martoon in the hallway that I just saw? Wow. Now, how come she don't have a show over there on uh, Light Bulb Radio? Oh, she don't have any baseball cards. Oh, okay. Can we get her some? Anyway, the new year is here. Well, what do you expect from the Sun Sentinel? It's 11.40 at WIOD. Randy Martin is in here sorting out her fan mail. Well, listen, open it slowly. <laughs> oh, it's only one piece. Stay for the moment. How come you're not on FTL? Um, <clears throat> there's just so many people there. There's not a lot of room. Yeah, but if you get, like, uh, some diamonds or stones to rub on, and be, you could be Jeannie, change your name to... Um, Gypsy Rosalie. Gypsy, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I like Shirley personally, but uh, wow, she is just uh, the Shirley MacLaine of talk radio. Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Yes, sir. Neil? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I'd like to ask you, do you think the Dolphin fans are the Pittsburgh Pirates fans of the NFL? or We're not that bad. They're not that bad? We at least, uh, you know, we come close to filling the place up. The Pirates are that that last couple of weeks of the season in Pittsburgh, I don't, I, I don't couldn't understand believe it. it. I thought there was an epidemic. I don't understand it. I would watch those games on a satellite, and there'd be like almost nobody there. And they, even on Monday, they had a promotion. There was like twenty thousand people there, and a stadium that seats fifty-two or fifty-five. And here they were having a great season and going for the uh, division, which they wanted. I, I don't. Uh, that's a really. You talk about a crap sports town. That's it. They do support the Steelers. Oh, they love the Steelers. Penguins. Uh, that's another story. Mm. How about the commentary? Boy, I know what was the CBS? That commentator, he's like, oh my God. About what? Uh, commentator on baseball on CBS. Jack Buck? Yeah. Well, Jack died about five years ago and nobody told him about it. So, uh, how many tickets remain for the Dolphins game? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I would guess probably uh, two, three thousand anyway. Well, you know, Dan Bishop can come up with the money, huh? Exactly. Park the truck in the parking lot, save the uh, diesel fuel for a couple of months, and use it to buy up those tickets so all the uh, freeloaders can see the game. Sure. So that's the least they can do. Campbell Marshall, do you think he's got marbles in his mouth? Or? I think Campbell, uh, his head hit the ground when the spaceship landed. I think he had a rough landing. He, he, he talks like I do. He's nervous as heck, right? Exactly. And uh, like you said, with marbles in their mouth. Have a nice life, sir. Okay. It's 11.43 at WIOD. We have a major broadcast celebrity on well, the line right now. Let me tell you, I'm a UM, UM alumni. Well, listen, I this, suffered this man was the, he was the symbol for the King Orange Parade the other night. <laughs> they used his head. <laughs> I suffered through all the losses in the late 70s. They said the size was a little lumpy, but the shade was just perfect. I turned the game off in the first quarter, went out and big cooked. Your head I'm talking about, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I want to watch dancing, I'm going to turn on Danny Terrio. Yeah, turn on one of those uh, jive-ass dance shows on TV, uh, da Soul Dance Party or something. I, I, that was just, uh, oh, man, I, I just, I, uh, there's no words to describe it. Speaking of shows, did you hear Only in a Bush League town like this would you have thousands of people getting hysterical trying to defend it, you know? Anyway, speaking of new shows, did you hear about the new show on CBS called Acorn and Andy, starring Steve Kane and Andy Garcia? Yeah. 
You know what they say, the acorn don't fall far from the tree. Whatever that I don't means. think it falls I don't know what all. it means, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm... Uh, well, uh, the rumor has it that he's so heavily into the baseball cards now that that's kind of uh, taken over as the new number one uh, part of his life. <clears throat> yeah, but those edges are so sharp. And the baseball cards, too. There you go. Well... I'm leaving after the Dolphin game. I wanted to call and say goodbye. If somebody would have only told him that uh, the, the moil that at birth that the edges were so sharp, maybe Steve and I both would be a little... What's a moil? ...better equipped to deal with life. A moil is the uh, scythe knife, the guy who uh, has that all those cutting comments. I now, you're, you're leaving after uh, the Dolphin after game After the Dolphin where? game. I'm heading for Chicago. For what? I'm going to be out there for a month giving it a shot, see if I can make some money. And You're going to go up there to stay? Yeah. Well, great. You can be our Chicago correspondent. There you go. You will call us, of course. I will do that. You mean you're leaving? It's temp- Now, let me ask you something. How are you going to maintain that orange com- uh, pasty complexion oh, God, when it's in, so cold up there? In seven-degree weather. You'll have to go, before you leave, go into Birdines or Jordan Marsh. They have that stuff that you get in the orange, uh, you know, what do they call that stuff? That tanning, uh, instant tan? Oh, or something QT. Like? QT. Yeah, right. QT. And you there put you it on, and you sit there, and within minutes, you look like uh, olive oil out of the cartoon or something. It'll, look, <laughs> it'll be right up your alley, Sally. Are you going to be in the press box Sunday? Or are you going to be down? No, to- sir. I do not have any press passes because obviously I, I could have gotten them if I asked, but Phil, uh, you know, was a little squeamish about it because they're overwhelmed for that. So being the well, wonderful you- humanitarian that I am, I'm paying for my two seats. Wow. Fat Rich is getting them for me. I'm paying for my 50-yard line seats, and I have my uh, sticker, my parking sticker. All I asked for from the station was my parking sticker, which I have in my hand right now, and that's it. Are you going to be in your little dolphin boxer shorts? Oh, yeah. No? I'm going to wear my Zubas pants there and my cap and... Get kicked out at the gate. Can you answer a question for me, honestly? I'll try. What did Henry Barrow do? Because that guy is so neat. What could he have possibly done? Well, no, there is a real story behind that, and I don't, I don't know it. There's a story about he did something or said something uh, back in the old days. He was about probably the honest, and, right? Yeah, he said something honest, and the, the powers that be, Mr. Robbie and Mr. Weaver, of course, which at that time were joined at the hip, um, yeah. Evidently didn't cotton to it, and he just kind of, uh, through the powers that be, faded into the woodwork and out of the stadium and back into the studio here, never to be seen again. Well, Jim, but, I, but it is a good point. I hope maybe uh, maybe Henry won't do it because he needs the job, but maybe somebody who knows the story behind the story will let us know. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's the reason why some of our sports people there at IOD can't be like, was that Gabe Kaplan that called the other day? Who was that that called your show that was irate about the Hurricanes that really said it like it was? Gabe Kaplan? Was it Gabe Kaplan? Oh, you mean Al Lombardo? Al Lombardo. <laughs> oh, look at that. Here's another stack of mail for Camillo's house that event just brought me. How do you like that? Wow. We're going to go over 100 and, uh, well, close to 105,000 by the end of the day. I-